Magic's Fallout set comes with collector boosters, and in those collector boosters there are some cards that are not in the precons. This is different from the Doctor Who collector boosters we saw previously, which only contained alternate versions of cards that were in the precons. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at the top 10 most expensive collector booster exclusives and talk about what they're worth and why they're worth so much. Let's jump right into this, starting with number 10, which is West Tech Tyrant, or as it's better known, Grave Titan. This is a 6 cost 6-6 six, six with Death Touch that when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get to create two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. This is a card that for six mana gets you 10 power and toughness on the board across three different bodies, so it's decently good, but it's mostly just a commander card that's seen a couple reprints. It was in Magic 2011 and then reprinted in Magic 2012, then it's been in a couple commander precons as well as being in a secret layer and on the list, so it's been reprinted a couple times here and does have a couple different versions, but the base version of the Fallout one, which is still this awesome Pip-Boy frame, is going for about $3.58 cents, which is pretty low, but this list does ramp up pretty quickly. If you want it in foil, it's only a couple cents more at $3.62, and if you want it in surge foil, it's going for $32.99. And that brings me to two really quick points. First off, this list is sorted in order based on the base version, so they're still fancy because these are all collector booster exclusives, but we're not ordering them based on their foil or surge foil pricing. I'm just including them here as a little bit of extra information. Second off, surge foil pricing is kind of all over the place, so take all of it with a grain of salt as I expect it'll fluctuate a lot as we move into the future. All right, let's move on to the next one, that being Toxic Sheep Squatch, also known as Gem Razor. It is a four cost green 4-4 four, four with reach and trample, and it says when this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls, and then it can mutate for one green green, allowing you to place it on top of another creature to kind of fuse them together. This is a card that hasn't seen a reprint since its original printing in Ikoria, but its original card isn't that expensive, so a lot of the novelty here is that you are getting creatures from Fallout that are actually mutating. They've said that mutating didn't really work mechanically for the set since humans do mutate in the Fallout universe, and part of the rules text of mutate is that you can't mutate onto a human. So it's really cool to see it here, but it's not necessarily a card that a lot of people are looking for. It's currently going for $4.77 in non-foil, $2.34 in foil, which is sharply lower, and $27.61 in surge foil. Of all of the cards on this list, this is the one I expect to drop the most, as the base version of the card is only going for $0.56. Cents. Next up, number 8, it is Fogcrawler, also known as Vigor. This is a 6 cost 6-6 six, six with Trample that whenever it's dealt damage, you prevent that damage and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each 1 damage prevented this way. Then whenever it's put into its owner's graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle it into its owner's library. This is a card that was originally printed in Lorewind, which is a set that didn't have a massively huge print run compared to modern sets. And it's only ever been reprinted in Battle Bond and The List, so there haven't been a ton of great places that this has been reprinted, so it's likely that this is more of an issue of supply than demand, meaning this reprint is likely to crash the price of it, and we're already seeing that. The old versions of the cards can be found for about $15, and this one is going for about $5.63. If you want it in foil, it's going for $6. $6.10, and if you want it in Surge Foil, it's going for $59.99, but I think that Surge Foil price is very optimistic and is likely to crash. Alright, next up, number 7, it's Scrounging Deathclaw, also known as Tarmogoyf. This one's a really interesting one. In case you don't know what Tarmogoyf does, it's a 2 cost green creature whose power is equal to the number of card types among cards in all graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that number plus 1. This card used to be a modern menace, being one of the best cards in all of modern. For 2 mana, it would come down and be a really big threat. But it has been pushed out of modern by power creep. To give you an idea of how good this card was, it was almost $200 a card, which would you consider you need 4 of them to play in modern meant that it was very, very expensive and one of the cost prohibiting factors of playing in the format. That card that was almost going for $200 is now worth less than $10, with before the reprint it going for about $9, and now with the reprint, this version is going for $6.74, the foil version is going for about $6.94, and the surge foil one is going for $29.41. This card's price history is kind of ridiculous. Now we're moving into some of the more expensive cards, the next card we have at number 6 is Farewell. This is a 6 cost white sorcery that has you choose one or more. Exile all artifacts, exile all creatures, exile all enchantments, or exile all graveyards. This is a very versatile board wipe that a lot of people dislike, but it is very good in a lot of decks, especially in Commander where that 6 mana mark isn't as hard to get to. It's also good enough to see play in formats like Pioneer and Standard, so there's a lot of demand for this card, but it has been reprinted a couple times, which is especially weird because the the card is still in standard. This is our first Vault Boy card of the list, and it's going for $10.32 in non-foil, $11.66 in foil, and $45.32 in surge foil. 
Just so you all know, all of these prices are TCG player market prices, except where there isn't enough data to form a market price, in which case it's TCG player median prices, which is typically just in the surge foils. And speaking of TCG player, I have partnered up with TCG player, so if you use my link in the description down below, it directly supports the channel. If you're already going to be buying singles or sealed product, it allows you to shop from a bunch of different places to make sure you're getting the best price, support local game stores, and if you use my link, it is completely free to you, and it helps support me. It's kind of a win-win-win. Alright, next up, number 5, it's Assaultron and Vader, better known as Walking Ballista. This is an XX00 that enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. You can pay four mana to put an additional plus one plus one counter on it, and you can remove a plus one plus one counter from it to deal one damage to any target. This card is really crazy powerful. It allows you to take proliferate and abilities that put counters on things and turn them directly into damage. It also combos with things like Heliod to go infinite and kill everybody. There are a lot of different decks that want this. Artifact decks like this, counters decks like this, combo decks like this, a lot of things like this card, and so it's a decently expensive card. This reprint has it down to about $11.99 for the base version, $14.59 for the foil version, and $34.84 for the surge foil version. Alright, next up, number 4, we have Crucible of Worlds, and this is back to the Vault Boy style. This is a 3 cost artifact that lets you play lands from your graveyard, which is really powerful if you care about lands, both in Commander and other formats. They allow you to repeatedly play lands that sacrifice themselves, like fetch lands, or things like strip mine if you're trying to kill all of your opponent's lands, which is mean, but really, really good. This has seen a number of reprints over the years. It's actually a pretty old card, but it's been reprinted recently in things like Corset 2019, Double Masters 2022, and then again now here in Fallout. Despite that, it is still going for about $13.39 in its normal version, $19.34 in its foil version, and $46.06 for its surge foil version. This is a card I'm really happy to see a reprint of because there are a lot of decks that just need this card in it, and so giving more players access to it is really great. Next up, number three, it's Soul Ring, which is breaking the rules of this video because this is a card that is in the pre-cons, but this is specifically the Vault Boy version of it. I almost cut it from this list, but it is found in the same slot as all the other Vault Boy cards, and it does have that borderless distinct style. I just figure it's more useful to you to know what cards to look out for, especially in these slots, so I am leaving it here, especially because there is another version of Soul Ring with alternate versions, and they're worth a lot less. The normal version's going for 79 cents, where this one is going for $13.45 in its base version, $18.62 in its foil version, and $96.60 in its surge foil version. So this is breaking the rules, but it is my list, so eh, it's here. Next up, number two, it's Wasteland. This is a land that taps for colorless, or you can tap and sack it to destroy target non-basic land. This is a very important card, and if it wasn't so taboo to destroy lands, it should be in almost every Every single commander deck as you can get rid of things like Gaia's Gradles and other really scary lands without having to use up slots in your decks. It's not necessarily trying to strip your mana base out from under you, but it's trying to stop those problematic lands that it's considered rude to destroy. But that's a separate video, we're not necessarily going to talk about why you should be running land destruction here, I've done videos covering that. This is a card that is very very good and has seen a number of reprints, there was one in Tales of Middle Earth, we've seen it in Secret Layers, we've seen it a couple different places, but it's still going for $21.97 in this style, $24.79 in foil, and $40.33 in surge foil. I love seeing this get reprinted, it is really great, and it's a useful tool to stop those problematic lands. Just don't go around destroying everyone's lands that they're using to cast spells with, because then you're not gonna have a commander playgroup. Speaking of not having a commander playgroup, number one is Ravages of War, which is a four cost white sorcery that destroys all lands. This is a card that was only ever in Portal 3 Kingdoms and as a judge promo, so it has been very expensive for a very long time. It's the exact same text as Armageddon, and while it isn't being driven by commander play rates, it's mostly an issue of not having enough supply of it. This has already crashed the price, it was going for about $250 before, and now you can pick up this version for about $25.47 in non-foil, $25.88 in foil, and $137.89 in surge foil, but again, I think that one's gonna crash a lot too. But yeah, those are the most expensive collector booster exclusive reprints and soul ring. It kind of gives you an idea of what to look for if you decide to get any collector boosters or if you're able to get your hands on any collector boosters. If you're wanting to see some more videos from me, check out this video where I talk about the top 10 most expensive cards in the pre-cons, and check out this video where I talk about the true value of serialized cards. Also, again, if you're going to pick up any of these, please use my link in the description as it really helps out the channel a ton. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.